your identity, your purpose, your destiny. Remember, your strength comes from your yieldedness to the process and journey. I don't know that God is necessarily concerned about making us happy. I think he's more concerned about making us holy. It's never God that's questionable. It's always our obedience. Welcome to Becoming Whole, the podcast dedicated to shining light on things in the character to help you become better, stronger, and more aware of who you are and who you are called to be. And now, here's your host, Daria Elizabeth. God is our compass, and that's what we're going to talk about today, God being our compass. He is the one that gives direction, directives, order, instructions. You know, so many people look to so many different things as their guide, as the uh, signposts or, or, or directions or directives that they should take for life. And, and oftentimes it, it boggles me and it's so befuddling to me, the fact that people will go to uh, voodoo doctors and witchcraft workers and sorcerers and palm readers and all these people who they end up pouring out their money to. And by the way, if you're pouring out your money to those people, those people have you in a trap. But it's so, it's so befuddling to me how people will go to all of these sources and pay money when you can go to God and it is completely free to speak to him. You don't have to, so someone once said, you have to wait in the doctor's office to go see the doctor, but you do not have to wait in line to talk to God. You do not have to sign a sheet and get on a waiting list to talk to the father. So it's so incredible to me and it's, it, and it really is, you know, human nature just to want to find purpose, find identity, find destiny, find direction and, and, and to do it sometimes by any means possible. But I'm here to let you know and to remind you that God alone is our compass, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who made the universe and every single thing in it, the one who created the stars, the one who told the ocean, come this far and go no further. He is the one who is our compass. And so, you know, if we are looking for wisdom for the next level, if we're looking for advice, if we're looking for direction, if we're looking for meaning for our life and instruction for the next big thing or just the next thing, it is so imperative that we take time out to talk to the one who created you, the one who is omniscient, all-knowing, omnipresent, the one who is and was and is to come. The, the, I wish I can stress the vastness of God. I wish I can emphasize his incredible nature and how he's the one, he's the master orchestrator. He is the one who puts everything together. The word of God says that he's the one that tells the ending from the beginning. So why would you not consult with a God like that? Why would you not consult with a God who is able to, uh, put the pieces, the puzzle pieces together in ways that you never imagined, you know, just sitting back, looking over my journey and my life, I can say with all sincerity, with all surety, with all confidence that God almighty is sovereign. And that when he gives you a no, that no is final and it's beneficial for you. And when he gives you you a yes, that yes is beneficial for you as well. And you know, it's so important that we, we seek first the kingdom and seek first the will of God and the counsel of God in all things. Because if we go around seeking our own judgments and our own desires and, and following after, you know, what we think is best, you know, there's a scripture that says all the ways of a man are right in his own eyes but the the Lord is the one who weighs the heart. And so if we go around seeking what is best to us, we will always end up in a pit. 
We will always end up in a space and a place where we are unsure, uncertain, can't process things, are confused, have no idea what the next step is because, you know, sometimes the imaginations of our hearts are vain. Sometimes we're taught by culture and, and, and family and, and, you know, social media and, and all these different mediums teach us what's quote unquote best for our lives, what's right and what's wrong, what our lives should look like. And the truth is that before we were born, God had a blueprint, a layout a specific divine purpose, a specific destiny, a specific future for each and every one of us. But the problem is we are taught from young by culture. We're taught by all of these different things, the way we should go. But God in his infinite wisdom always has a way of showing his blueprint, his fingerprint, you know, his thumbprint through the course of our lives, reminding us, no, go this way. No, reject that. Yes, do this. If we look at the life of Joseph, you know, God almighty was the common thread in his life, weaving his way through his life from the moment, you know, that he showed him the dream, even up until he was second in command in that power. God was always the one from the pit to Potiphar's house to prison, you know, throughout, you know, his entire walk, God was, was, was the one who was always governing and always kind of silently in his sovereignty, leading the way. And even in the life of Ruth, you know, we see the silent sovereignty of God, you know, the silent divine providence of God, even in her journey as, 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 as she chose to stay with her mother-in-law and chose to travel back, you know, to her mother-in-law's country and to be with her and to, and to not, you know, give up on her, so to speak. And God honored Ruth's faithfulness and blessed her beyond measure with an incredible man who was well known, you know, in the town and just a man of, of valor and, and means and, and, and a man of good character and virtue. And the power behind that, even that story is that Ruth did not seek her own way. Ruth, because of her sacrifice, God was more than willing to give her the desires of her heart. Same thing with Christ because of his sacrifice. He has the highest seat in the kingdom. The word of God says every knee bows to him and he alone has the highest name above all principalities, all powers, everything in, in heaven, in earth, under the earth. He has all powers simply because of his sacrifice. And so sacrifice is a powerful element in, in seeking God and allowing him to be that compass because there are many things that he will ask us to do that we don't necessarily think are the best or that we might not necessarily want to do, but the power behind following him, the power behind getting to know him, as Paul said, is also to be a partaker in his sufferings, also to be a partaker in the sacrifice or the sacrifices that he calls us to. And so my encouragement today is if you want to live the fullest life, when I say full, the word of God says that God will give us in this life a hundredfold houses, cars, land, etc. but it's going to come with persecution. So don't think for a moment that your victory and your increase and your success and and all those things are going to come without without some type of persecution. They're going to come. But the promise to that is he is the one that is granting us this victory, that is granting us this success. And when God gives something, the word says it maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Even though there may may be persecution, you know that once it's from God, there is victory on the other end. And so my encouragement to you is this. If there are things that the compass is telling you to do, follow the compass. If there are things that the compass 
is asking you to do, is imploring you to do, is telling you to give up, is urging you and encouraging you to walk in. There might be some level of sacrifice that you have to make. There might be some level of giving up of yourself that you might have to do. Do it. On the other side, there is glory. On the other side, there is glory. The Bible says, we see the patience of God with Job. How after Job went through his traumatic situation, the word of God says that God gave Job a double portion, double for everything he had lost. And that his daughters were the most beautiful women in all of the land. God, through his mercy, He is truly a good, good father, as Chris Tomlin said, through his mercy, through his justice, through his judgment, through his love and his willing to be so patient with us. In the end, you will reap. The word of God says that after you have suffered a little while, God himself will establish, strengthen, settle you. And so if the compass is telling you to do this or to do that, to go this way or that way, be encouraged and know that he will never lead you wrong. And even though he might lead you into valleys, into trials, into hard things that will prove your character, know that the compass knows the way you take. And he's the one who laid out the blueprint for your life before you were born. And blessings will follow you all the days of your life as you opt into his plan, as you opt into walking into obedience, as you opt into everything that he has designed and desired for you to do. Be encouraged, my friend. Today is the day of victory. Today is the day when you see through different lenses and no one understand that the calling of God and the purposes of God over your life will be accomplished as long as you choose to follow the compass. Be encouraged and follow his lead. He knows what he's doing. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Becoming Whole. Tune in next time for Becoming Whole. And remember, The world needs you whole.